Hey, welcome back to Dave Mirror's Freestyle BMX 2. I'm Insetic, and with me, of course, is Blank Tester. And on this episode, we're going to level 2 Train Yard. The, his spins are just shit. Yeah, uh, there's a couple things I didn't mention in the first video. The first video, I feel I was rambling a little bit, so I've actually compiled a list of things to talk about. And, well, first is I picked the character that I picked because he had higher speed and air stats. Of course, there are, he has some really bad stats, like spinning. But I don't really do spins in the first place because I never seem to be able to land them. So this character is, like, perfect for me. He's bad in the things I'm bad at, and he's good in the things that I really need. Because if you've seen the first uh, video, if you've seen Woodward Camp, there's some challenges that are made a lot easier if you have a higher speed. Like, the character that I play through, like, the levels the first time through, uh, Tim Mira, he doesn't have as much speed, and I notice I have a much easier time with some challenges as this guy. Whatever this guy's name is. Uh, so, so, would you say the stats definitely do make a big difference? Like all of them, or just most of them, some of them, none of them? Which ones, like which ones are really big game changers? You can feel the difference uh, between one character and another. I think speed and air are certainly big game changers. It's actually, this game's actually sort of backwards compared to other games like it, where grinding and manual stats would have a really big difference. I'm not noticing much of a difference in those stats. And then there's a couple, like, technique. Hold on, I gotta ask a question. Why were you crashing into the train right there? Was, it, was that, well, what were you doing there? I was trying to get past the train, and it just kept coming. Okay, so I, I was thinking you probably could have gone around. It, it, it was one of those things where it's like, sure, I could have gone in front of it, but at the time I was thinking that, would, you know, pedaling out in front of it would have taken longer, and, you know, in my mind I was like, it's gonna finish any time now. You know, kind of when, kind of when you're sitting at a crosswalk and you just sort of miss the light, like you want to walk across and the people before you did, and you're like, I'm just gonna wait because I don't think there's enough time. And then 30 seconds later, when the light's still green, you're like, damn it, I could have gone. Yeah. Just one of those examples. Uh, wow. Nice. Yeah, something, something you can do in this game, which I don't think the game tells you, I kind of accidentally discovered it, is if you bail and you hold triangle, if you, like, hit something and then you're going to fall off the side, you can hold on the side of something and then sometimes like if you hold on to the side of an entire ledge like you'll respawn up on that ledge oh, wow. which is really nice it's it makes a couple things easier that's kind of nice okay you were saying something before i interrupted you uh, i can't remember what it was yeah i don't know so it was about the um grinding and manuals and those stats how those affect it, which is different between this game and other games. Well, it might not be really different, I just don't see a, a big difference, because the manual system in this game is actually pretty easy to keep a manual. That's one thing I like. Grinding, there's no real uh, balance bar. It's so, it's, it's easy to keep a manual, but hard to get a manual. Or actually, since the previous episode, I've learned that, you know, like, manually in this game is when you're in the air, you have to hit down, down, and on the second down, you have to hold it until you hit the ground. And if you do that, you'll manual, like, every single time. I was trying to do what every other extreme sports game lets you do and just hit down, down in the air. Uh, I don't know if I want to say, oh, I didn't understand the mechanics, because it kind of is the game's fault if it's going to do something <laughs> different and worse than like every other game and then not tell you yeah that, that's okay so this time this video I have a good list of goods and bads and I'd like to go through those without going on tangents or or trying to trying to have self-righteous arguments that just kind of fall apart uh, I don't know I don't think I did good things about this game I mentioned the tricking system 
and how you have a thousand tricks or over a thousand tricks. And I do like though I, I do like that because it does offer a lot of variability. I don't know what crashed me there. And it's not like the game or I think maybe the game does take points off if you start doing the same trick over and over, but there are enough tricks that you you shouldn't need to. And the music in this game, the music selection in this game is actually pretty good. Cause sure, they've got some early 2000s, like Godsmack, rock, stuff like that. But then they've got like one or two songs from like the 70s or the 80s. Like the main song for this game, like the song they play over the intro is She Sells Sanctuary by... Is it The Cult or The Cure? I don't remember. But either way, that's from like the 70s. And they've got um, Paranoid by Black Sabbath. It's a live version, but that's also from, like, the 70s. So it's not completely full of Blink-182, Sum-41, Disturbed. You know, it's it's not all songs that would make you hate yourself if you were, play, if you were playing the game now. Yeah. So they did do some good things with the music. And, you know, certain mechanics of the game, like manualing, is you know, very easy to do. Manually in this game is actually, I think, easier to do than in other games. Because the same kind of balance bar system that other games use, you know, it's actually kind of harder to keep something going than the system they use in this game, where it'll kind of take into account, like, I don't know, the character's position along the ground, if that makes sense. Like, if you've manualed, like, your guy will start to kind of fall forward naturally, but then when you push, pull back, um, you, it, you know, the there's not a balance bar that rockets straight down and you've got to hold forward again and it's like a balancing act. No, you pull back a little, your guy goes back, but it'll start falling over again. It, you just need small changes and that you can actually keep it going much longer. However, of course, the bads, as you can see, is that the physics are kind of confusing, you crash easily, and... And doing one thing, like, I don't know, there's there's multiple ways something can go, like using that ramp to try to jump over what that. The fuck? There's a tiny bit of environmental changing this level, oh. mainly just to catch you off guard since you have to talk to that guy there oh. later on. But, yeah, like, the, the bat, what I was, what I was trying to say is that, like, when you use that ramp to jump over that train car, sometimes you'll clear the train car easily, and sometimes you won't really get that much of a jump. And it's not really about having enough speed, it really just feels like having luck. Like, uh, you'll see later on there's a challenge where I need to grind from a bench to a bench, and if I jump at like just the right time, I get enough air to easily clear the bench, but if I jump at any other time, I don't get much air at all, and again, it's not about holding down X or something, it's like, it's like the game has a trigger where if you jump at like the last second, it'll give you more air or something. Again, I'd like to know that if that's the case, because maybe that one challenge in Woodward isn't as hard as I thought it was, but again, don't get it, don't get as much air as I really should have, like, I don't know, I didn't think I slowed down or stopped. So I ended up deciding to just cheat this challenge and uh, jump off of a roof over the train car, even though I didn't have to do that uh, when I played through the level the first time. And you, that's not because of his stats either, because he does get plenty of air sometimes. That's weird. That's really weird. Yeah. I mean, just like... Other games, like I said, like the Tony Hawk games and even the games I've played before, uh, don't don't seem to have something like that. It's, you know, that they, they make it easy to jump off of a rail, or if there's two rails next to each other and you need to jump from one to the other, they make it really easy to do. Like, a specific example, uh, in the museum level of Aggressive Inline, the game we just played, in the back half of it, there was one challenge where I needed to pole vault off of a horizontal pole and grind a tank cannon. And I I knew, I knew that if I held right uh, as I was swinging off the pole, I just, 
I knew that I would land on the cannon to grind it. Like, I trusted that the game would do that for me, and it did. I feel like if that was in Dave Mira 2, I really wouldn't be able to just go. Uh, you, you know, that, that, would, that it would require a lot of user input as I try to, as I try to make it work. Yeah, I feel like these these physics are very strange. They're they're just and and the game mechanics don't really lend themselves to making the physics any better. I I think. Um, there was something I was gonna say, and I uh, I was gonna I'll ask you after the video actually. Is it about the game? It's, yeah, it's about the game. It's just it's something that I was I was gonna ask you if you were gonna um. If you were at all going to do like a gap guide, like just show people the gaps, but I, I don't think they're really terribly hard to find. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do a gap guide. There's another guy on YouTube who actually has videos for all the gaps on the levels. I'll probably just, you know, if people really want to see the gaps, like they're playing along, I'll probably just put an annotation on the screen yeah. uh, to link to them. Uh, the reason I exited the level is I got enough respect to earn this guy, I really need to remember this guy's name, but I got enough respect to earn this guy's second bike. At 5,000 respect points, you get a new bike that increases all your stats. And the challenge grinding from a bench to another bench, I'm really gonna need it, because, I don't know. So you see how I really didn't get very much air at all. Yeah. Like, I just kind of- Not a lot of distance. Not, no, like nowhere near as much distance as you know, in real life, he would have with that kind of speed. It, it's, if you're gonna end up getting that a, a lot, like the reason I go up here, use this uh, quarter pipe, and then try to ride down this, is to get as much speed as I can, because if I'm gonna get a crappy jump like that, I'm gonna need it. Yeah. Uh, but you'll see, coming back and trying it, like, it's honestly, I I'm, I should get to this in a little bit, but like I've mentioned, it's honestly faster to just bail, but look at how much air I got right there. Like, I jumped at the perfect time for the game to let me do it, and, like, if that happened every time, then yeah, this challenge would be a piece of cake. But that, I don't know why that happens, is kind of a problem. Yeah. Huh. And then there's other just small things about the game that don't really add up, like how tough it is to slow down. There's not really a break button. I mean, sure, you can hold down on the D-pad and slow down eventually. But then there's, there's skidding in this game, which you'd think would cause you to slow down faster. But you really don't. It's, it's more like another thing where you can see how long you can skid. But like... If anything, if anything, it takes more distance to come to a stop if you don't try to, like, spin your guy in circles abusing the physics. But there's just... It's not easy to stop. To just stop your guy. You basically need to, like, jump and intentionally crash. Uh, you saw at the end of the Woodward Camp video trying to get up to the last guy to get the insane challenge. Yeah, you know, it wasn't really easy to jump up onto the slide, and then like, if only you could just stop your guy, it it, it would have it would have been a lot easier. And in other games, like again, aggressive inline or like Tony Hawk, like if you want to stop your guy, you the guy the guy will stop. I'm sounding really re repetitive, so I'll I'll end that issue. I uh I want to point out we said this the last time, um. We talked about this last time, but uh, you were saying that you wanted to talk about the good and the bad in a more cohesive way, and I, I think it's worth reiterating that one of the good things is the uh, fact that when you get close to an objective or, you know, something that would allow you to do an objective, it'll show you in the top right corner that it's, like, an objective, which is, wow, that looked painful. Yeah, you, you get where I'm going with this. The game definitely lets you know where your objectives are. They'll usually glow, like, flash yellow or green if you're by them, but you can't see them. Still, the objective itself will pop up, kind of blue in the top right corner. Like, hey, just reminding you, 
except they only remind you when you're by the area you need to do so you know like okay it's kind of close by yeah. i should just look around and i'm i'm you know, since i know like for the challenges where i need to talk to someone to get the challenge i pretty much know where they are by the time i'm recording so i'm i'm not going to keep demonstrating that if you talk to people you've already talked to they'll point you in the direction of the guy you need to go which is another nice thing cuz if you have no idea that'd just be fucking annoying during during my recording i knew this guy was up here but if you'd never played the game before yeah. how would you have known yeah that would have been really annoying yeah see that was really slow stopping it's like i said it's just another thing to to, to basically see, oh, I, I can do a longer one, you know? Like, longer manu longest manual, sure, I understand. Longest grind, sure, I get. Okay, longest skid, I could even get if there was a better way to slow down. Yeah. But there's not really. And, I don't know, this train, like I said, there's stuff you have to do with the train, so it's good that, you know, it's kind of long. But when you need to get past it, it's sort of an issue and also just the level this level in general we haven't really talked about the actual level there seems to be a lot of empty space yeah i mean look at all that to the left there's just nothing and i mean there's like a building that you can go into or a building or two and and those are good those those are fairly populated with object and objects and then you get out into the open world and then there's like train track and i mean i get that in real life you probably don't want to put too many things really close to a train because they can get pushed into the way of the train but still there's this is a game you can you know do things that are unrealistic so i don't know what was the uh, insane insane challenge insane challenge was to manual on the flatbed oh. thing which considering an earlier challenge was to jump over the flatbed thing if you saw me trying to jump over it and consistently accidentally manualing it, the insane challenge is actually easier than one of like yeah. the amateur challenges. Yeah, that's... I thought it might be something more complicated than that, and then you just ended the level. I was like, what? Okay. Yeah, like I, I mentioned, um, the uh, actual challenge difficulty progression in Dave Mira 2 is also a little weird because. There, in a subset of four challenges, there will be, like, three challenges that are almost kind of easy, and then one that is so much harder than the other ones of it, and probably even harder than the ones that come after it. Yeah. Then again, in each level, there's also usually one challenge that is just so frustrating that it makes me question if they even like play tested the game <laughs> like i know when you uh when you're making a game it's a good idea to get people who haven't played the game to right. play the game right like portal 2 like all the development develop m develop developer Developers. commentary uh was about valve people going like okay so we made this way too hard but then people had no idea what they were doing so right. we changed it Right, just exposing it to people who, you know, haven't ever seen any of the content and then see how they react to it. That's probably your best bet. And that's that's a good rule of thumb for any software developer. Yeah, there's there's just some things in Dave Mirror that don't work. But I think I've said that quite a bit. Yeah, um, next level is Swamp Trails. Uh, yes, it? the yes. Swamp Trails. Make sure to join the two of us next time when we go to a swamp.